right, do me a favor. Share this out. Uh, we have to have another chat, I guess. So I'll wait till some people get into the room here, and then I'll start the, the discussion. For those of you on Twitter uh, that are watching, just hang tough. I'm just waiting for the rest of the platforms to populate. Uh, I, I run like five different Facebook platforms, YouTube, Twitter, and DLive. So I just give it a minute. You guys do me a favor, share this out. Retweet, share it on Facebook. Bust through the shadow banning because it's really bad. And uh, and let's start the discussion. Uh, but before we do, it's been a while since I've gone live. It feels a little odd, actually. Uh, I went camping there with the kids, the cubs, for a few days and then got back home. And then I ended up uh, down south at a family reunion, which was a hoot. So I've been a little busy with family the last couple of weeks, um, which is why I haven't live streamed much. Um, although, stay tuned tonight. Uh, if we can work it out, I believe uh, Archer Pulowski will be joining me for a chat, as well as uh, tomorrow, uh, Rob Boudelier is going to join us for a chat. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one as well. Um, but this has reared its head again. Marcus Ray and Christopher James, they have now, the VF4 has intel on this guy. It's not good. No, it's not good. Uh, okay. So when Marcus first came to the table with his first plan, uh, myself and Sean Taylor did a live stream in response to his plan. And Sean knows Marcus Ray personally. Uh, Marcus actually helped Sean on his campaign. Uh, so Mark knows the guy. Or, sorry, Sean knows the guy. And so we did a, we did a, a, a live stream response to his first plan. And if you remember... His first plan was they were going to bring in and use the bikers. And, 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 and a lot of this plan was unbeknownst to the bikers. But that was the plan. They were going to suck in or attract the RCMP to some diversion created by the bikers. Somewhere around Grand Forks. It was an enormously stupid plan. They were going to do that. And then the thousand rednecks that Marcus Ray had brought to the table, or at least advertised that he had a thousand people, um, implied that they would be armed and that they would surround the RCMP then and essentially hold them hostage while they demanded that the people responsible for the pandemic, et cetera, would be held accountable. <laughs> oh, it makes, my, it makes my skin crawl on how incredibly stupid that plan was. And so it was that plan where he also made the speech in front of the log cabin, the infamous log cabin speech, where he made no bones about it that this was going to be violent and that people should bring their tools with them. That's what he started with. This is what his name 
was associated with. He went around telling people that he had military and he had police backing him. He doesn't. There might be one or two. <laughs> he doesn't have that support. Never has. Never will. The second plan, after he decided, through probably some of me and Sean's criticism of it, and identifying how stupid it is, he created plan number two, plan B, with Christopher James, the common law hero, who has done exactly nothing with his common law knowledge. Zero. He's accomplished absolutely nothing in the years that I've seen him exist on YouTube. He's accomplished exactly nothing. What he did accomplish, I shouldn't say that. What he did accomplish was he managed to get a whole bunch of people, I think it was in Barrie, Ontario, who were going to arrest the mayor, showed up at 150 people or whatever it was, and sat literally sat there with their thumb up their ass doing nothing and made fools of themselves based on what Christopher James had told them. Christopher James has accomplished exactly nothing. Because when you talk about common law, when you talk about enforcing common law, you need an enforcement mechanism. Which is why I denounced those two clowns because they came together as a match made in heaven. Christopher James has been running this snake oil salesman pitch for years. What has he accomplished? What has he ever won? Nothing. He, he talks a good game. He's a fast talker. He's a great snake oil, snake oil salesman. But he's accomplished exactly nothing. He's managed to inspire some people to use it and fail and get themselves into trouble. That's what he's managed to do. Christopher James then jumps on Marcus Ray because, boom, all of a sudden Marcus Ray's rhetoric, and as I said early on, was violence, and that he's got military and police backing him, which he doesn't, but Christopher Ray sees this and jumps on Marcus Ray because, boom, there's his enforcement mechanism that he requires. <laughs> it's pure insanity. So the plan was, the second plan B, was they were going to go, this, this group of a thousand, whatever they are, were going to go down to Victoria. And they were going to commandeer a courthouse and hold a judge hostage until the politicians responsible for all of this insanity showed up. <laughs> like somehow these politicians are going to feel compelled to walk into a hostage situation in downtown Victoria at a courthouse where they have a, a judge held hostage and commandeered a courthouse Think, people. Think how insane that plan was. The first plan was insane. The second plan was insane. Pure insanity. And now there's plan number three. Because so many people, reasonable, critically thinking people denounced Marcus Ray the moron and I'm angry I am pissed and you know why I'm pissed because this douchebag this glory hound is going to destroy the movement he's going to destroy what I've spent four years of my life dedicating to and I'm not alone there are thousands just like me 
who have dedicated their time, their lives, their energy, their prosperity to this movement because it means everything. And these two douchebags are going to destroy it for us because of their half-cocked, half-thought plans. It's insane. Marcus Ray, stay the fuck out of my province. Don't come to my province. Don't bring your stupidity to my province. Don't do it. You're not going to ruin this movement and everything that we've accomplished to this point because you are impatient, because you like the spotlight. Your first two plans didn't come together. It's why we're still waiting till September 11th, 2022. This was supposed to happen eight weeks after you first announced the first plan, the first stupid plan, the second stupid plan, and now the third stupid plan. What is your plan? You're going to bring Christopher James to do what? What authority does Christopher James have? What position does he have? That the state, that the federal government, that the provincial government or any municipal government is going to listen to? What standing does he have? Zero, which is why he's accomplished exactly nothing to this very day. But he's using you to create this facade of action. And people bitch at me all the time saying, oh, well, at least he's doing something. No, what he's doing is ruining the freedom movement. What he's doing is ruining our credibility. What he's doing is destroying what the freedom movement has accomplished to this point, peacefully. You can't tell the RCMP you're going to show up to their training facility in Regina with the largest convoy ever and think they're not going to have a response to that. Like, and, and, and somehow Christopher James using his snake oil, common law magic is going to somehow accomplish anything. He needs enforcement to do that. He needs a standing army to do that. A standing army that could take on our military and our police and our security forces. Forget it. It's insanity. Christopher James is running his mouth saying he's going to hang these people in the court of public opinion. He's going to hang these people, he claims. He, I just watched his video. He claims he's going to hang these people in the public square. <laughs> what? How? How are you going to do that? How do you think that you think the RCMP across this country is going to join Marcus Ray, a male stripper, a guy who has 14 court cases filed against him, a guy who tried to steal or whatever it was through fraudulent means a senior citizen out of a hundred and ninety two hundred thousand dollars you think the rcmp across this country are going to follow your dumb ass you're insane and people that are following this idiot are insane think critical thoughts he's a snake oil salesman they both are Stop this insanity. It's only going to bring our movement down. And all the work that we've done and everything that we've accomplished to this point. Listen, until we reach critical mass, until the masses, till that person riding a bike right now, until she understands what's at stake, what they're going to lose, we still have work to do. A lot of these people, most Canadians, 
walk around in a bubble. Their world is inside that bubble. They're not going to listen to Marcus Ray. They're not going to listen to Christopher James. They're not going to listen to Chris Skye. Just say no. They don't even know why they're saying no. They're not going to listen to Mark Friesen. Because all we're going to do is burst their bubble. They don't want their bubble burst. Until reality, until the consequences of reality burst their bubble. That doesn't mean we don't, we do nothing. We continue, as I have done for four years, I've dedicated my life to educating and informing as many people as possible as to what's coming. And guess what? All of those seeds that I've planted over these four or five years, well, longer than that, I've been doing it way longer than that. All of these seeds are bursting into growth. People's light bulbs are going on. Because of what they're seeing, their observed reality, the fact that they can't afford to pay the mortgage, to put food on the table, to put gas in their car, the fact that they're going after our farmers, they're going after our food sources. As these things continue to happen, more and more people are going to wake up based on what we have done to this point, planted seeds. This information war that we're in, we're starting to win it. Don't blow it with bullshit. Don't blow it because some snake oil salesman that wears a cowboy hat and talks about children every time he's in front of a camera says so. Don't blow it because some idiot snake oil salesman, common law guru who's accomplished nothing to this point, says he's going to hang the politicians in the public square. Don't follow that. Don't let them lead you down the garden path to destruction. The RCMP has been aware of Marcus Ray and his plans from inception. What do you think the government wants to do? They can't wait for an idiot like Marcus Ray to destroy this movement, to hand this movement on a silver platter to the government. They can't wait. And they'll use the RCMP to do it. Guaranteed, there are RCMP, there are CSIS, there are security people who have infiltrated this movement. Guaranteed. Without question. Because of the rhetoric he started with. Because of the first two plans he put in place. He's been picked up by the RCMP. He's been interviewed. What else has happened? Think. Maybe he's been compromised. As Chris Sky says in his video. I'm not going to go and make as bold of a statement as Chris Sky has. But it's a possibility that he has been compromised. And he wants all of the leaders in every province to identify themselves and to be the leader for each province. Come on. Come on. The RCMP are fully involved in all of this. This is going to set back the movement worse than anything. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm, I'm giving you my opinion and how I look at all of this. It's insane. It's all insane. Regardless of what Marcus Ray is saying today, regardless of what, how he's changed his message, oh, it's peaceful, it's this, it's that, doesn't matter. None of that matters. He already set the stage. He already set the narrative. He's already damaged what he wants to do. His credibility, he did He did this. He destroyed his credibility. I didn't. I just call it out every time I hear a stupid plan. And I'm going to continue to call it out 
that I'm going to continue to, to shine a light on this insanity. Don't, don't let him, don't let them, Christopher James, Marcus Ray, destroy this movement. Don't let them. Marcus Ray, stay out of my province. I want nothing to do with you. And most people in this province that I've talked to want nothing to do with it. Don't come to my province. Nobody's invited you. I, I don't know anybody. Maybe you've talked to people in this province that do support. I'm sure there are some. Uh, not in my circles. Not in any of mine. Uh, anybody I talk to. Um, they, don't, they don't buy it. They're not buying it. And I'll do whatever I can to protect this movement. To protect ultimately my the nation I love that I've dedicated my life to trying to save through information through education not violence not stupidity but so people understand what's happening because when they understand what's happening then the people can have their critical mass and once we've re reached critical mass, we can affect change. We're already affecting change. The freedom fighters have already affected change. I'm going to give you an example. Marcus Ray likes to say that if it doesn't happen on September 11th, 2022, that it's over, Canada's lost. Well, go fuck yourself, Marcus Ray, because it ain't fucking lost. I'll, I could be sitting in a fucking gulag and it wouldn't be lost. So go fuck yourself, Marcus Ray. It's not lost, regardless of what stupidity you bring to the table. Here's an example of how we haven't lost and how we're winning. At, right here in Saskatchewan. The people of Saskatchewan dictated to our premier what he's going to do. As the convoy was moving to Ottawa, the people of Saskatchewan the rural folks, the, the base of the Sask party, the ruling party in this province, at that same moment had 10% of their donations they would have had previous years because the, their base, the rural folks of Saskatchewan said, you know what, Scott Moe, enough of your tyranny, enough of your mandates, enough of your restrictions. They spoke with their support, with their wallet, and they shut him down. He had no choice but to make an announcement they were lifting the mandates and restrictions or they're finished. The people, the people in this province came together and forced him to do that. And what happened after that? The very next day, Jason Kenney announced they're lifting the mandates and restrictions in his province, but they moved it up because they have to be better. That's a fact. These are facts. And what happened after that? The rest of the country dominoes fell because of this province and what we did. The people, the people spoke and used democracy to fix the problem. And you know why they did it? Because enough people in this province understand what's at stake and what's happening. And we affect change. Because of that, I've spent, I've busted my ass for four years, right through the pandemic, doing town halls throughout this province, trying to educate as many people as to what's happening with the globalist agenda, the World Economic Forum, the UN agenda, Agenda 2030, SDGs, busted my ass. And I sure as shit, I'm not going to let some fucking Yahoo, who's a glory hound, loves the spotlight, destroy this movement. Not going to do it. I'm not letting it happen. So whoever supports this guy, you can shit talk me till you're blue in the face. I don't care. I don't care. This movement is way too important for us to just throw it away into the hands of some meatheads that that think somehow they got a magic wand. They're going to get the Royal Canadian Mounted Police to be on their side. Or they're going to get police forces across this country on their common law side. It's insane. So, anyways, I, I obviously 
I obviously couldn't do this in a in a two minute drill, so I had to go live. But I, I had to get it off my chest. Um, I had to say these things, and I know it's not comfortable for some to hear. Um, too bad. I don't care. Right is right, wrong is wrong, and we can't allow this to happen. We can't allow this uh, infiltration of a subgroup to destroy this movement. The government loves this. Not only, just not only the the event in and of itself and the damage that it can do to this movement, but the, the division that is created by what he's doing. Based on his plans, he's created a lot of division. And the government loves this. There's nothing they like more. It's almost like they orchestrated it. It's almost like they infiltrated his group to get him to do things, to get him to say things, to discredit the movement. Well, he's not going to discredit me because I've denounced him from day one. He's not going to discredit Veterans for Freedom. He's not going to discredit Police on Guard. He's not going to discredit Kerry Simpson. He's not going to discredit um, anyone else that stood against this insanity. He's not going to do it, thankfully. So, um, again, I'm not going to tell you what to do. That's up to you to figure out. That's up to you to determine for yourself. I'm here expressing my opinion, what I think about all of this. And because I believe I'm I'm righteous, I believe that that in what I'm saying, I'm right and I'm correct. And and this movement and this country and the people of this country mean way too much to me to let some idiot come in and destroy it for us. I, I can't I can't sit back and say nothing. And just let it happen. So, I don't know. You guys you guys will do what you do. We'll all do what we do. And, uh, you know, inevitably, inevitably we'll win. Um, if we if we maintain a semblance of, of sanity, if we maintain uh, our integrity, if we maintain um, uh, our peaceful position, um, the second, the second that you don't, you lose any opportunity of reaching critical mass. The second that you promote this stupidity, you lose our opportunity of critical mass. We're never going to have 70, 80% of the population, never. Because <laughs> there's just that many people that are apathetic and ignore what's happening and, and love the warm embrace of big government. But there's going to be enough of us there is going to be enough. It's inevitable in this spiritual war that we're in, in this information war that we're in, in this cultural war that we're in, there will be a time when we have enough critical mass to affect change. It's coming. We can't force this. They have us on a dark path. There's no question in my mind. They have us on a dark path. And if we can't resolve this democratically, if we can't resolve this peacefully, then yes, it, it will go to another another way. It will go to violence. There's no doubt about it. I'm not encouraging it. I'm trying to avoid it. But it will it will go to that place. But it'll happen, and it'll happen organically. It'll happen naturally, if it ever happens. Again, I'm working my ass off in the hopes to, to, so that doesn't happen. I don't want that to happen. I've, I've, I know friends. I, I have good friends that have served in other countries where their countries went to shit. And the, the level of violence, the level of, of degradation, the, the level of... Um, inhumanity in those situations is not something I want for my country. I don't want it. I know there's a lot of big talkers out there that sit behind a computer and they're tough and they tell everybody that hey, we need a revolution, a violent revolution. When does the, when does the gun start? Um, 
they're idiots. Those people have never served in a war zone. Those people have never served in a, a revolution, a violent revolution or a rebellion. And listen to the ones who have, like Veterans for Freedom, Police on Guard, others. Listen to those folks. James Tall. Listen to those people. We're trying to avoid this. We're trying to solve this. I mean, we have, again, Canada has a reputation of standing up to tyranny. Now in our own country with the convoy. The convoy has established such enormous credibility because they remained peaceful. And that gives the rest of us an opportunity to continue to move forward. Don't let people destroy this. Don't let people that say, this is the last stand. This is the last opportunity. If we don't stand up now, it's over. Bullshit, Marcus Ray. Bullshit. Anyway, enough's enough. I had to get that off my chest and uh, express my opinion on this whole thing because uh, people were asking me to do it, and I did it. So it is what it is. Thanks, guys. Uh, do me a favor, share this out. Make sure it gets out to as many people as possible. Um, that's a wrap. And remember, globalism bad, nationalism good. Ciao for now.